definitely the salvage crew. Well, because I wanted to write a story about an art, a very Buddhist artificial intelligence. And I wanted as a writer to also work with AI technologies to write this kind of book. So that I would, I would not just be writing about machine poets, but I would be creating one myself. And I managed to do both of that with the book. So it was a technological breakthrough as well as um, a fantastic literary experiment for me that really worked out. As a child, I would have to say, and this is odd because I write science fiction, but this is a fantasy writer. I would definitely say Terry Pratchett. My favorite book of all ever has, I think, always been The Night's Watch by Pratchett in the Discworld series. Right now, I'm reading Joe Abercrombie. Uh, he's an author that uh, is sort of a pioneer in what's commonly called the grimdark genre of fantasy and I haven't read a lot of his work and I've, my friends who are you know writing fantasy who are fantasy novelists professionals in this have been telling me you have to read this guy so I finally gone okay okay I'll read this guy I don't know if I idolize an author because I've met many of my idols and I've got to know them as people as well and when you do that, you know, you sort of lose the, the godlike image that you've established. But there are people I respect. Um, there's William Gibson, there's Jeff Van Der Meer, there's, I would say, Diana, Diana Wynne Jones, who wrote the Crestomancy series, Howl's Moving Castle. There's Hayao Miyazaki. I'm a huge fan of Studio Ghibli films. The storytellers of all stripes, so many that I respect and I really look up to. There's three books, three novels that are in print. Uh, there's two more on the way, so those have been written and done, and there's two more that I'm working on right now. There's generally about six months to a year of research involved before I ever put down anything on paper, because I want to know that, I want to be certain that I know what I'm going to talk about. I want to be certain that I have an idea, I have stories, and I have good characters that can explore those stories in interesting ways because otherwise there's no point for me. So I spend a lot of time thinking and then I find that if I do the thinking, the writing is actually a lot easier. I think for five days and I write only on Saturdays and Sundays. So on Saturday I wake up, I around 10 I have my first cup of coffee, I sit down and I will generally write for 10 to 12 hours straight and then Sunday, repeat. I am very much a rice boy. <laughs> I, I want my rice and I want my gravy, but if it's stuff while, that I inhale while, while writing, I don't eat a lot while I write. So I will quite often just drink lots of coffee and eat Milo. I eat Milo. I think the best way of, so I get distracted by new ideas all the time. And I think the easiest way for me to deal with that, what I found is I give myself time to be distracted. In the mornings when I wake up, I don't do anything. I read what I want to read. I listen to whatever podcasts I want to listen. I let myself be distracted. And then I go, okay, now we've had our distraction time. Now let's get on to work. Let me think about my recent Audible reviews. Oh, oh yeah, there was a one. There was a one sorry that said um, this writer just doesn't know how to write. Just uh, has too much philosophy, too, too much poetry. Doesn't know what he's talking. Doesn't know what he's writing about. There should be you know action. And uh, my approach is to shrug and say, well, it doesn't work for you. Cool, move on. I think they're useful if if sort of organized with people who read and people who are deeply into the kind of literature and the authors that are going to be there, then I think it's fantastic for everyone involved. So Bangalore Lit Fest, uh, definitely. We were there uh, at a time when they were expecting race rides. So the organizers came to us and said, apologies, the attendance is only a third of what we expected it to be because people might be in the streets. That third was 50,000 people had an incredible audience that had you know really tough questions to ask so it's not the same 
where do you get your inspiration from? But it's like this specific thing that you wrote about there. Why is it there? How does it work? And I love questions like that because that's real engagement. I've been shortlisted for the Nebula Award, which is one of the most prestigious in science fiction. I believe the last person from Sri Lanka to be listed for that was R.C. Clarke. Um, I've been, I've won the Virtual Fantasy Con Award in 2017 and I've been listed for a handful of others, but the Nebula is really, I would say, in terms of science fiction, in terms of what I do, that would be the most prestigious. My latest published book is about a Buddhist artificial intelligence seeking poetry and aliens and another intelligence in space. Right, so I have two different stories and this is, um, I think, quite frankly incredible. Um, two different short stories from two different anthologies, one in the Future Chronicles, another charity anthology that I did called Hellcats. Um, both of these anthologies and all the authors there, along with Sir C. Clarke's Ashes, uh, will be going to the moon, to the lunar surface, uh, aboard the astrobotic Peregrine Lander, which will depart the Earth uh, sort of in July. And it's going to be going to a place commonly known as the Lake of Death on the moon. That's going to be very interesting. So the idea is that, I mean, personally, what's exciting for me is that Neil Armstrong's footprints on the moon are going to last about a million years and that those are estimates um, so our fiction will potentially outlive possibly all of human civilization as we know it we've it's been 10,000 years since we went from fire to TikTok. so we're talking about a million years and that's really exciting to me like what kind of future species or what kind of future human would potentially look at these things and try to understand and recover parts of our culture and then this these things will be part of it